So let's say you'd like to teach a complete newbie how to understand a little bit about colour theory. I've got two really important things to tell you that will help because I taught colour theory for many years at all levels, but particularly for when you're teaching a newbie, there are two things that are really important to keep in mind. And firstly, that is get them relaxed because then the, the information can come in and remain more easily. And secondly, keep it simple. So what I'm going to do is um, tell you what I used to do, which was firstly, I often gave them something else to look at, uh, as in a flower from the garden. And then you take your colour theory from the piece of nature. So this is going to be colour theory about complementary colours, red and green. You give them a uh, lovely soft plant like this one here and you talk about how nature shows you um, beautiful examples of colour theory such as red and green. I'm going to start off by saying, okay, if we let's plot where red and green sit on the colour wheel. Up here you've got yellow and in colour theory I love the theory that yellow is at the top. I, um, I could cycle back to this later on if I was teaching a new group and I'm just throwing that in there for you guys. Yellow, B for blue and red over here. Now let's say we're going to make this an example of red and green. So in watercolour I don't use cadmium red, just don't use that at the beginning. That's a complex colour, it's actually a brown, uh, a browny red. It's, uh, it's certainly a red that's useful at times, but when I'm teaching watercolour students for the very first time, I encourage them to use permanent rose or quinacridone rose or any of those magnificent pinks. Because pink will mix with all the other colours, unlike uh, cadmium red, which is brown. And then you get, you don't get magnificent purples and things too. Not that we're doing purple. Anyway, what I'm doing here is getting out a nice thick amount of deep permanent rose. And then I'm going to get some lovely clean water. And over here, I've got light. So then I've got light permanent rose and then over here I've got a darker version of permanent rose and we're going to use that as red. Don't encourage your newbies to buy a green. What that does is stop them understanding how you make green. So instead you get them to bring along a white, <laughs> a white, you don't have white in watercolour, a yellow, a blue and a red, but the red is actually permanent rose or alizarin crimson, one that you know is going to make a beautiful purple in fact. Get them to make their own green because that's the therefore the only colour mixing they're doing it seems in this exercise, but there's actually so much learning in uh, what we're about to do here. Okay, clean brush for the yellow, it's pretty much the only time. I use a clean brush, the rest of the time I'm not that worried about being clean for um, colour. There's my yellow and I'm going to get another brush and I'm going to use phthalo blue because it is a pure blue. So if you were teaching colour theory that's a brilliant one to start with. But in reality on my class list I write down ultramarine blue because it is multi-purpose. Anyway, so I'm using a bit of those two blues. Okay, here's my blue and then you add the tiniest bit of blue. Oh, I'll add a bit more, a bit more blue. Oh yeah, a bit more blue. And then firstly, what you're teaching them without even having to show much at all is how much that blue, I just need a little more water to get this ultramarine moving. A bit more blue here. So to go back to what I was saying is that a little bit of blue into the yellow and automatically you're showing them that yellow gets consumed by every other colour so easily. A bit more blue. A little blue into the yellow and you keep going until you've got a lovely lemony green. And then I'm just going to get another clean brush back into the yellow because it's a clean brush and drop some of that yellow into the blue. Pull that over here and you get a dark. So I know that takes a little bit of time in the setup but it's just worth it for what they're about to learn. But really they've only had to mix up green without um, having to think about it too much. Okay back to our little colour wheel here. Big G for green 
and I'm going to put on that lemony green and then you're going to talk about the fact that these two colours are opposite each other on the colour wheel. Red and green are opposites and at some point in the exercise, I don't usually throw it in at the beginning at all, I put it a bit later on, maybe on the board or something like that. Depends how you like to teach. I used to hand out notes, but then I kind of switched to the board. Anyway, what we are doing is uh, a complementary colour exercise. We are going to paint without a pencil. Newbies often have fear about draw their drawing um, abilities. It's really rare I found that a newbie watercolourist would come in and already ha know how to draw. Um, so just, just assume that they don't already know how to draw and that I've got this beautiful, beautiful, isn't, I'm just going to put it up there so you can all still see it. And I've got this beautiful colour. Oh, I'm just going to spritz slightly everywhere on my page. And then you talk about looking on the side so that they can see where the water is on their page. And you've now talked to them about a dark tone and a light tone. All these things you're just throwing into the mix. And then I'm going to just paint quite abstractly. So where there's pink, where you see pink, you put down a lovely pink bloom. And there's more pink up here. So at this stage in the process for newbies, you're not worried about where they're putting things. Composition can come later. But by practicing painting, they'll start to just enjoy the process. I'm just putting some colours down. I'm going to put some pink over here as well, just because um, I like that idea. Here's my lemony green and I've got leaves. So I'm going to put big swish down there for leaves, leaves. And I'm just doing it with two strokes. I'm doing this quite fast. In the classroom, you may find that you need to stop and let them um, practice each stage. And for that judgment, you just need to be listening to the classroom, be really tuned into uh, what they're saying to each other. Sometimes they come as friends. Actually, that was pretty common that they came in groups. And if you can tune into uh, what they're saying, it's really, really, really helpful. Already this is starting to look rather beautiful, the, the pink and the green together. And the whole time you'll be talking about how they're beautifully opposite. But this green is a lemony green. I need this dark bluey green to come in. So you're practicing wet in wet. And um, when I was teaching all the time in class groups, I was forever using all the terminology because I found in general that um, watercolorists and, and artists in general, they tended to uh, be intelligent people, people who were looking for um, something quite cerebral. And painting is beautifully cerebral. I'm going to get now some lovely dark pink over here because the pink in my palette is going to be thicker and darker. And I'm going to do a little more wet in wet. So the reality of what I'm doing is um, just joyful. And again, you just need to be, oh, that dark pink, need to be tuned in. I'm gonna put the red into the green and you give them permission to play. That's very important, I found, for helping them to loosen up. Just don't worry about the outcome. We are just looking at how beautiful red and green look together. Um, now, do I want anything else? Stamen. I'm going to use, do a little bit of scratching out and whether or not you do scratching out at this point in the process is completely up to you. Just see if I can get some of that lovely colour to come down. This one too. It can be so much more beautiful than, um, a little bit of, so much more beautiful than... Uh, painting it in. I'm going to get a little tiny brush now and oh the paint is coming off the um, side of the ugh, ugh. I hate that when it drops on my painting. This is um, totally my fault though the fact that this paint is coming off because I've had it in wet spots. Anyway I'm going to put in some of this beautiful green 
on the tips of those um, stamen. You know how fuchsia have always have those stamen that come out and then there's a dot on the end. So we're gonna do some little lovely dots. And I, I'm being fast, you'll find they take much, much longer than I'm taking. And that's okay as well. You wanna give them space to explore and play. I'm now going to put a little um, stem in. So when you are teaching, you'll want to be thinking about how to time it for them. They uh, will vary dramatically. I'm just joining the leaves now. They will vary so much in uh, what they know, what they um, have already learned. And uh, that's one of the other things that I um, loved to focus on is They'll join the lesson and they'll say, um, sometimes they used to say, oh, I haven't painted before. Uh, I don't know anything. That was, oh, people said that all the time. I don't know anything. But in fact, if you start to talk to them about creative pursuits, you'll find, um, particularly because they were mostly women, sometimes men um, were brave enough to come along. Um, but the women would often have been pursuing other creative pursuits and they often involved a bit of colour theory and so I often would, oh god I'm saying often, 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 anyway I'm going to do some scraping out see if I can get the leaves to have a bit of um, shape in them. Anyway my point is that if they had been a sewer of some sort or a knitter or a crochet or anything like that or if they've painted in other mediums they already did without knowing have a sense of um, colour theory. They'd already been thinking about it. And also, uh, in the world we now live in, we are constantly bombarded by imagery and we know what we love and don't love. Anyway, that is uh, how to um, introduce to newbies the uh, complementary colour system of red and green. And I can't uh, emphasize enough that getting the students relaxed first um, and then getting them talking is really helpful. If you get them to the stage where they're asking you questions, that is fantastic because you'll tap into what they really want to know and where they're at, what they do know and how to um, draw out their skills. And, um, and uh, I hope that helped. I hope you get to go and show someone a little bit about colour theory and uh, get them talking. That would be great. But see you guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye.